Hey, what's up guys? It's Evan, and today we're going to be looking at navigating in your React Native application, uh, specifically using Stack Navigator with React Navigation. Now, we're going to be using version 3 of React Navigation. Now, this is very important because the earlier versions of React Navigation, if you've been around for a while, you know, they uh, they weren't too great. But luckily, the beautiful Brent Vatney and Eric Vicente made it awesome. Hats off to you guys. Super dope. So I'll be referring to the docs a lot throughout this video, or maybe I won't be, we'll find out. And uh, these are just great, they did a really good job going through and making sure that this all makes a lot of sense. You get the API reference and you have just general docs with lots of guides on how to do very common navigation patterns. And I'll only be covering the stack navigator today, I'll have another video covering the tab navigator, and the drawer navigator, and the switch navigator. So over here I've got this lovely demo, I'm going to show you what we're going to be looking at today. We can hit this button, we can log in, and you see We've got a header bar up here, we just pushed the screen on top, and we can slide it back using our finger, we can press the back button, uh, but let's navigate in, and then we can push another screen on top of that, and this screen is more specific, it has data that we sent from the home screen, the data of course being like by sad height, and then we can like, you know push back again, or we can hit sign out, which will push us all the way back up to the top of the stack. A lot of different things and concepts that we're going to be looking at, we'll also look at some customization, but I want to make this a quick video, so let's just uh, roll right through it. Alright, so we're here at the snack, and of course the link to the docs and the snack will be in the description below, so if you just want to stop the video and go check it out, feel free to do so, and uh, we're going to walk through a few of these things but let's start off by talking about what a stack navigator is so as you saw over here we're pushing screens on top of a, a stack and a stack works very similar to an array if you're familiar with an array in JavaScript I really hope you are because I'm not going to be explaining a lot of that stuff here's an array right a basic array you push screen a onto the array and then the array would look something like this uh, it just has one object in it if you were to push another object like screen B then you screen a and screen B which is similar to what we got going on here screen a screen B and then if you pop it, you go back to screen A. So this is kind of what the format looks like. That's the best way I know how to describe it. There's also the actual description, which is provides a way for your app to transition between screens where each uh, new screen is placed on top of a stack. Long-winded explanation, but I figured I should add it. Now, if you've used older versions of React Navigation, you're probably familiar with the syntax stack navigator, which you would import from React Navigation. Uh, that's been replaced with create stack navigator. So just a little a quick note, they do the same thing but it's a new name. All right, and so to use uh, Create Stack Navigator, we have two things that we want to provide it. We want to provide a router and a configuration. Now the router specifies which screens we can push and pop to, navigate to, all that good stuff. And then the config defines like how it looks and the style, which we'll get into a little bit more later, but I've got some, uh, some ones here that, you know, here just, ah! Anyways, we'll put a pin in that, we'll come back to it in a second. Let's look at the router. What we do with the router is we just pass in components. Now these are just basic components. Here's a little preview of what it looks like at the top of the screen because I'm too lazy to scroll up. And you see it's just a, a simple component. Nothing makes this different. Like you could pass in button from React Native and it will also work as a screen. Uh, so th nothing makes it very special. So there's different variations of how to do this, so just so that you're not confused. Uh, as you can see here, this one, it's not very special, like if I had a different key maybe for it. But because it's matched with ES6, I can just do the same name variable thing. So over here, you see we're using kind of the older syntax, uh, but a little bit more powerful. We're passing in an object, and then we use the prop screen, and we pass in the component that we want to use for that screen, which in this case is the profile screen component. And then we can also pass in navigation options which will, uh, I guess we can get into that now, we're kind of done with the screen part. Basically what navigation options are, are a system for defining uh, the way the stack navigator looks on that particular page, or you could use them more generically with default navigation options in the, the router config, but uh, we won't be getting into that today. It's in the lovely docs if you wanted to take a look at it. Uh, so using navigation options, I think the, the easiest way to wrap your head around this is this is something that we can use to pass in the title of the page. So if I were to look at the login page here, you see I've got title and profile for, and then I'm appending a parameter that we sent from the home screen. But you could do a couple of other things in here, and this isn't the only way to set navigation options. It's not even the most popular way. We'll look at that one right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these screens. Let's look at the main one that we got up here, login screen. Now as you can see, I left a little note here that every screen has props.navigation passed to it. Uh, and a screen is of course defined by if it's the main component that you pass in from your router. 
and uh, then it will get this this.props.navigation and that's a very powerful prop and you can do a lot of stuff with it but uh, I think generally it's just used for like nav like pushing and popping uh, screens which we'll get into in a second right after navigation options uh, there's a lot of things going on at the same time here so I'm putting a pin in everything here is kind of the more popular way to do navigation options that you may have seen around the internet you can also just pass in a generic object it doesn't need to be a function but when you do it with a function then you can get access to the navigation prop which we don't need in this case so here is a navigation option that I'm using to uh, omit the header from this screen so you see there's no header up here because I'm passing in header as null I can comment that out and then if the snack is still connected which I doubt it is because nothing's updating let me refresh that bad boy all right there we go now we got it working so you see the header bar is up here now so I'm gonna go ahead and pass header null back in just because we don't need the header on that page so now it's gone and uh, then over here you see we can use navigation options to pass in the title of the page that we want here it's just home and I think that's all I'm gonna cover for that you can read more about it in the docs there's tons of navigation options that may be more suited for whatever your particular need is so if there's some kind of customization like for instance if you wanted a custom component or you wanted to change the color of the navigation bar or something that is where you might do it for that particular screen that's enough about the navigation options let's talk a little bit about pushing between screens so over here you see I've got a very generic Come on, I mean, the phone is in, do not disturb. Everyone on YouTube seeing who I have Twitter subscriptions to. <sighs> so over here in the login screen, if we check the render method, you see I've just got a, a generic view, and then I've got a text element with an on press method, which creates the button, this button. When we push that button, we're going to be saying this.props.navigation.push. And now you can use push or navigate, and then you define the name of the screen. Now the name of the screen is what's defined by the key right here. So if we were to change this to like home screen F, then the name is now home screen F, and that's what we need to type in if we wanted to move to that next screen. Now the difference between push and navigate are that you can push screens infinitely, and then you can only navigate once to the next screen. So for instance, if I was to push login screen, then I can just keep pushing login screen. Uh, and then if I were to navigate to login screen, I'm a very slow typer. Yeah. If I were to log into navigate screen, it'll work a little differently. You'll see it actually doesn't go anywhere because we're already on the login screen. I prefer to use push just because there's lots of reasons why you might need to push the same screen, but use whatever works best for your uh, scenario. Now let's talk about popping the screen. If we go to the home screen, uh, you see I've got this uh, very poorly put together home screen and then I've got two buttons over here I've got one which will pop us back to the login screen I've got another which will push us to another screen the profile screen so when I push the the pop button this one right here what happens is we call this function and then we can do this dot navigation dot pop and then the older syntax was this dot navigation dot go back but pop is what we use now Maybe there's a little difference in how they work, similar to push and navigate, but I couldn't find one, mainly because I didn't check. All right, so when we hit this push button to go to the profile, uh, we are actually, we're calling push, but then you see here at the end, we're actually passing in some parameters. Now this is how we send data from one screen to another screen. So for instance, if this was a profile to another user, I might send like, uh, for instance, if it was someone uh, like Charlie Cheever, then I could pass in his height and Charlie Cheever and now when I go to that screen you see his name is here at the top and then his height is right there much taller man than me I'm very jealous but this is how we send data to another screen now let's look at how we actually use and implement that data uh, by going to the profile screen here okay so the way we actually access the data we pass from one screen to another is by using this.props.navigation dot get param now this is a slightly newer syntax I believe the old syntax was this dot props dot navigation dot state dot params dot and then the data now this one was a little unsafe because there's a chance that params wasn't defined if you didn't pass any params through which means that if you did params dot height it would say undefined is not a, a thing so you can't access data on it so get param is a lot safer of a method to use I would switch to that if you're using this older syntax of course 
uh, and then you pass in the name of the variable that you wanted, uh, and that is how you use data. Now, you can use data in the component, or you could use it in the navigation options, which is what we do down here in our, uh, our router. And the way we do that is we just extract navigation as a prop from the function that is passed through to navigation options. And then we do the same deal, get param and name, and we're appending that to our profile for to make the title for the screen, which is the profile for Charlie Cheever. All right, so there's one more uh, navigation function I want to cover, and that is popping all the way to the top of the navigation. So you see here I have the sign, in, sign out button, and if I hit that, it's going to be a little different than if I push backwards. If I hit that, it goes all the way back to the top. We do that with this.props.navigation.pop to top. That's kind of it for the core navigation functions you need to know. Uh, pretty easy to remember, actually. I like pop to top. Good name. All right, so let's look at three more things. Sorry, this video is going kind of long. Uh, but let's talk about the config that we have here. So we can pass in a bunch of things, and I always refer to the docs with this, even though I've been using it for such a long time. There's just so many things, it's hard to remember them all. Uh, let's look at a bunch of them though. So initial route name, for instance, we can set which route we want to go into first. If this isn't defined, then whatever the first value is, that is what the initial route will be. So when we specify home screen here, then home screen is, as you can see here, now the first screen that we go to when we edit a thing. So if we were to make some change, we're just gonna go right to the home screen. This makes it nice if you're trying to like test out, for instance, profile screen by changing that title. We could just make profile screen the main one, although you see now data is coming through undefined because we didn't define it in the prior screen. Uh, so that's initial route name. So let's look at this one, mode, modal. So what the mode is, is it's the, uh, the method that's used for transitioning and rendering the screens. Uh, I actually got that right here on the docs a second ago. I'm gonna cut that out with movie magic. Then you see card is the default value that we use. It's uh, what is similar to navigation on iOS and Android, but with modal, you can make the screen slide in from the bottom, which is really only common on iOS, and then it doesn't do anything on Android, because on Android screens kind of already, what's with all these notifications? I have no friends. Because on Android screens by default slide up and fade in from the bottom. So if I hit the login button, you see it's now sliding up from the bottom, and I, I'm trying to slide back with my finger right now, physically. I'll show you what that looks like on the mouse. I'm trying to do this with my hand, and it's not doing anything because it slid up. But if I was to slide down, then it, it, you can pull it down. All right, let's look at header mode. Now, header mode is a, a little bit of a strange prop because the it has three different styles, and one is different on iOS to Android, or at least the one that is used. So if we look at header mode, it specifies how the header should be rendered. And on iOS, it uses float. On Android, it uses screen. And then if you use none, then no header will be rendered. Uh, so that this is, uh, if you define something here, then it will affect the pattern on both devices. Whereas if you just leave the default, then it will pick a different value on iOS to Android. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to float. And if I was to come over here, looks like the header mode is floating. Oh, screen on Android, right. You want to define that as a different value so that we actually get something going on here. And okay, so you see up here at the top, the navigation bar is coming in with the screen as opposed to fading between one screen and another. So if we change it to float, notice up here the navigation bar, uh, it will it will just the contents will fade and it will stay in one place. Uh, now, header back title visible, I'm sure you can guess what that does. It just doesn't render the back title right up here. Again, I'm gesturing with my actual hand and it's not very useful to you. Uh, header transition preset, you have fade in place and UI kit, or you could define a custom method for uh, transitioning. When we go to fade in place, you see everything just fades and it doesn't do the, the, the shifting to the side and fading in that happens by default on iOS. You can define header layout presets. So there's left and then there's whatever the default value is, but this can uh, allow you to attain a more material effect. You know, on Android, things are left aligned. So I noticed that you also need to turn off back title, which is why I laid it out like this. I had a whole plan throughout the video. And then the card style is just the general style for the card. Uh, you can change the background color. You can change like the default padding. Uh, so over here, if we were to combine all these things together, it's gonna look kind of funky. Let's just go ahead and throw it all together, see how it looks. And you see it's working way differently than before. We uh, we pull down to dismiss and the header stays there and 
things just kind of, and now the header slides all around the place. But as you can see, very easy to create uh, whatever kind of configuration you want, even though I just put in a bunch of random values, it still looks pretty cool. So I'm really happy with how uh, things can turn out with the Stack Navigator. That is all I'm going to cover for the router config. Again, there's so many options here that I don't have the time to get into. So I definitely recommend you check them out. Uh, in fact, it's much easier just to go in with a goal and then look for whatever props you need as opposed to like going through everything individually because there's just so much that you can do with it. So the last thing I want to talk about is the navigation container and screens. Okay, so the navigation container is something that you import from React Navigation. What it does most notably is like it connects the back button on Android to the main stack navigator that you're using. So when you push that button, then it will pop back in the navigation as you would expect on Android. And then it does some other things with like uh, connecting the environment to your application. So it's just a lot of kind of behind the scenes magic, but it's the top level thing that you need to do. If you were to circumvent this and just export your stack navigator directly, then you'll get this error saying that it's missing. And this is a React Navigation 3 uh, thing. So this is brand new. I don't think any other tutorials explain this yet. On web, it's a little differently where you do like create a browser app, I think. Yeah. And that will help configure things to work with the, the back button in the browser. But anyways, that's the best explanation I've got for that. Really, I, I just kind of do it and I don't question it. But if you wanted to, you could dive into the source code and see a little bit more about how it works. Okay, so here is why React Navigation is the best navigation library for React Native. It's this new thing called React Native Screens. Now, React Native Screens are a new primitive. A uh, primitive in React Native is something like a view or text or image. React Native Screens is a navigation container. That's something like a UI view controller and like a fragment on Android. I could be totally off of both of those. I think this explains it best, really. Like over here, you see we've got all of these uh, items that are being rendered. When you implement React Native Screens, then it knows that when a new screen is pushed on top of an old screen, then it doesn't need to draw the contents of that old screen anymore. So an example over here is if I have login and I push this new screen, then if I have React Native Screens enabled, then that login button is no longer being drawn each frame because the system knows to optimize the prior screen and not draw it. So you're getting native performance with React Navigation if you want, but you also don't need to enable this and you can get uh, a perfectly fine JS navigation option. So I like that you have that flexibility and uh, this of course is all bundled in with Expo by default so you just get it right out of the box. Now this is experimental in React Navigation 3. I believe the plan is to get it working in React Navigation 4 by default. So if you want to enable it then do import use screens from React Native Screens and then just call that as a function and just like that it's now working and look, you don't even notice a difference, but you're getting massive performance differences here. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment if you have any open questions or if there's something else that you wanna see explained. And uh, if you ran into any issues, be sure to tweet them at me at BaconBricks. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.